Carolina and Mercer. Final home game of the season for the Tar Heels, who won the toss and elected to defer. Mercer's in the white, Tar Heels in the Carolina blue. Durden from the goal line. Stumbles near the 20-yard line on the return for the Mercer Bears of 20 yards. They have to keep an eye on Durden all day long. A very dangerous return man that will flip it right around and play wide receiver here on this cold and wet day in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. 46 degrees. Very, very light breezes, but that steady rain continuing to fall. North Carolina converting to a synthetic turf field over the summer from the natural grass. And first and ten now for the Mercer Bears. Kalen Riley is the quarterback. Over the middle, that's complete. Ball came out, bouncing around on the turf inside the 20 for North Carolina. And they've recovered the fumble. Durden made the catch. The ball came out at the end of the play. Knocked away from Durden by Chaz Surratt. And then he covered it up. Well, and of course, Chaz Surratt is going to recover this fumble. Just a big-time playmaker and a big-time lick by Don Chapman. Coaches so much praise. Jay Bateman, his defensive coordinator, on the safety. Chapman, he goes low to make sure he doesn't go hat-to-hat -hat contact and trying so hard to scoop it and score it. It is Chaz Surratt. They get the turnover nonetheless. And what a terrible start for Mercer. They're going to have a few yards, positive yardage on that first play. Good-looking play, but Durden's got to tuck it away. Immediately in the red zone on the turnover. Trying to string it out and turn the corner. Close to the 10-yard line, Michael Carter ran into Harrison Poole, and Carter got eight yards on the, yards on the run to match his jersey number. North Carolina, 85% in the CPI security red zone. 33 of 39 with 19 touchdowns. They rank eighth in the ACC in red zone offense. That's Carter again. He's got enough for a first down down to the eight yard line and four yards for Michael Carter, the junior from Navarre, Florida. Navarre way over in the panhandle near Alabama by Pensacola. And Michael Carter just one of three greats there in the backfield carrying the ball next to Sam Howell. So take a look at his numbers. Phenomenal true freshman season. Carter. That stopped initially. Second effort did not produce much more. In fact, it's going to be a loss of four yards on that run as we return to those impressive freshman numbers for Howell. Yeah, and a good job defensively. Mercer, the knife through there. That's one thing that they really try to do up front defensively is get some penetration on first down. They'll commit to it, and then you put this offense in situation second and long, hopefully third and long as well. They're going to run it. Williams to the goal line and in. Antonio Williams, the senior, has the touchdown for North Carolina of 11 yards. Well, the junior, Michael Carter, helped him get down there and give it to the senior to cap it off on senior day. One of 19 with the first points on the board for the Tar Heels and a guy that Mac Brown absolutely loves. A transfer from Ohio State, drawing first blood. His 33rd carry of the season goes to the end zone for 11 yards in his first TD of the year. And Ruggles has the extra point. 7-0 Tar Heels. Started with a little house of pain. Jump around, pack it up, pack it in. Let the heels begin. Into the end zone after the big turnover by Surratt. And then Williams to the house. Surratt defensively. And they give it to Antonio Williams for 11 yards, James. Well, and just blowing him off the ball up on that offensive front, making it easy for the big back Antonio Williams. With more on Antonio, here's Kelsey. Well, we tell you, this coaching staff, this team loves Antonio Williams. Speaking of Mac yesterday, he said he is the most upbeat human I have ever been around. He has never questioned why he didn't play. He's really happy after wins when he didn't get to play much, and he's really sad after he gained 111 yards last week versus Pitt when they lost. He said he has so much pride, and he works so hard, and I've never seen a kid who plays that little compared to the others 
with his expectations as a senior have this good of an attitude. And he said, you know what? It's really helped me. It's picked me up to understand that meaning of selflessness. And he said, he has been the best example of the kind of player we want in this program. And he said, we would be undefeated if we had 44 Antonio Williams, guys. Yeah, I love it. He's got 16 people here. He's from North Carolina, committed to North Carolina out of high school, then committed to Wisconsin, ended up going to Ohio State, made his way back home, though, with the transfer. And all of his, all of his people from back home in New London, North Carolina, here to watch him play today and get to see him going to the end zone to start things off. First TD in a Carolina uniform for Williams, 7-0. Tar Heels, Kalen Riley, the junior from Calhoun, Georgia. Bad quarterback for the Mercer Bears, and he hands it off. Devison spins his way up the middle. Junior from Woodstock, Georgia, got three. Well, nice job by Miles Dorn. Stay backside and wait for that bend back. And here's a look at the starting quarterback, not at the beginning of the year for the Mercer Bears. At the beginning of the year, it was Robert Riddle. And for the second straight year, he's been injured. And also for the second straight year, it's been Kalen Riley who's come in to take his place. On second and seven, that pass behind the receiver. And Storm Duck had a better chance at it than Tucker Cannon. Incompletion brings up third and seven for Mercer. Four and seven on the season, three and five in Southern Conference play. 40% on third down for the year for Mercer. This is the fifth start in a row for Kalen Riley. Best game came against Samford, 21, 21 of 44. And 250 yards passing all season highs. Take care of that football. First things first here. They toss it out to Devison. Surratt drags him down. Short of the first down marker. Only got three. It's fourth down. Well, Chaz Surratt has done such a good job. The angles. All of his angles early in the year. Everything was so new to him. Now he's taking the proper angles. It's just it's, it's becoming a little bit more natural to him when he goes out there already with the big turnover after the Chapman hit. And here he gets a big drop on third down to shut down that offensive Mercer and force the punt. He had that interception with just 14 seconds to go in the game against Duke right at the goal line to seal victory and bring the victory bell back to Chapel Hill. Grant Gopal to punt. This is Groves. Groves got hit before the ball arrived, and a couple of flags are out. And that's going to be David Durden, who fumbled the ball earlier, and he hit him head-to-head, -head, so there's a chance that this might be a targeting as well, and if that's the case, they're going to lose a dangerous receiver and return man. But no excuse for that to begin with. You, you need all the help you can get. You got to do the little things. Kick catch in the field. Kicking team with targeting number 13. 50 yard penalty be reports from the smart of the foul. The previous play is on the further review. Marcus Woods is our referee, and you heard him say that they will review this play as far as targeting is concerned. Although on the replay, James, it appears that the helmet hits the shoulder first, perhaps. Well, remember though. It's also about the tackler leading with the crown of his helmet. Be the targeting was not upheld. Not enough evidence to support the targeting, although the penalty for the hit prior to the ball arriving with Groves back there to receive that punt. This is over the middle and complete. Diami Brown makes the catch for 12 yards. Pass is complete to number two, Diami Brown. So, first down, Tar. And off to Carter. Down the sideline for Carter. He's trying to stay in bounds to the end zone for Carter. And it's a touchdown. Michael Carter. Mercer has had a tough time stopping their SOCON foes. They've been run on quite a bit right up the gut, so they have got to commit to stopping the run in the middle. You can't let it run it right down your throat. 
But therein lies the rub because a guy with the speed of Michael Carter can bounce it outside and it's to the house. What a nice start here for North Carolina, clicking offensively. 45 yards of the rushing TD from Michael Carter. Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and the last home game of the year for the Tar Heels. And this presentation of ACC College Football is presented by your local Ford dealer. How about two TDs in a minute and 51 seconds, both on the ground from Williams and Carter. And it's 14-0 North Carolina. Bobby Lamb's team in a quick 14-0 hole going on the road for their last game of the season after losing at East Tennessee State a week ago, 38-33 in Johnson City, Tennessee. Bouncing in the stands, trying to keep warm on this chilly day. Mays and Cannon, the deep men, and that one bouncing to Mays, circles out of the end zone. And then gets hit at the six. And mark him up at the seven. Boy, it's been an adventure. The first two kickoffs early from Mercer. How about our four keys to the game? For the visitors from Macon, Georgia, Tom, went with some Beastie Boys song titles here today. It's slow and low. That's the tempo. It's what it's supposed to be anyway. Hey, just chip away and offensively don't give up the big play. Keep the cap on it. Keep the lid on it. They've already given up a huge one on the run from North Carolina. No sleep till bowl game. It's hey, <laughs> let's let's not let our guard down. Let's not sleep at all for Mac Brown's team. Every single time out, let's get better and let's go charging into next week and then hopefully into a bowl game. And here's a big tackle by Chaz Surratt, who just keeps on coming every time out. Those your four keys to the game, brought to you by your local Ford dealer, James Bates, and the Beastie Boys. Yeah. Okay. I like that. that that's a pretty good team. I'll, I'll be on that team. <laughs> Chaz go. Surratt, leading tackler for this team, and also leading the ACC in tackles per game for the junior from Denver, North Carolina. Second and seven for the Bears. Trying to work it up the middle of the field with Devison. He got five. He's coming off a big performance in that game against East Tennessee State. Devison had four rushing touchdowns to tie a school record. That's the second time this season yep. he's run for four in a single game. Yeah, he had four against Samford as well. He's a really good FCS back. Just 5'8", 233. That squatty body, though, he can power a couple yards here and there. He needs to find a way to get two now. 168 yards a week ago, and he cannot get to the line to gain. Short by almost two yards. Storm Duck, the freshman from Boiling Springs, South Carolina, comes up from his corner position, makes the play, and it's fourth and one. He should have a good game today. It's a good day for Ducks. Wet and nasty, going low and cleaning it up. Chaz Surratt, one more tackle. Unofficially, he's probably got about four already. Remember back in that six overtime game against Virginia Tech, Surratt had 17 tackles, a career high. That sack and two tackles for loss. Groves is deep. Gopal from about his two-yard line. Third straight three and out for Mercer. Groves came up to meet it at midfield. There is a flag on the play. That punt was 34 yards. Running into the kicker, receiving team, number 14. Five-yard penalty results in the first down. Yeah, it wasn't the big one. They only needed two, though, so a fresh set of downs, a freebie here for Mercer. Emory Simmons ran into the kicker. It wasn't a whole lot, but it was enough for five yards and a first down for the Bears. Well, when you get near him, you've got to pull up. It, it wasn't even like it was an effort like he was going for it. The punt was off, and he just kind of, just a little too lackadaisical. you, you got to be alert of where you are on the football field, and that's that's unfortunate right there. And Mac Brown letting him know it over on the sidelines. Should be Carolina football right now, first and ten. Devison. Tough to bring down. He's close to the marker, just beyond the 30-yard line. Tyree Devison, the junior, for nine yards for the Bears. Oh, see what I mean? Just, just low to the ground, finds a little hole, gets down low, and you're not going to be able to drop him just by arm tackling. He runs through three tackles right there. You're going to have to bring a load to bring down Tyree Devison. 
A nice looking run there after he was cut down short of the first down try on third down last time. Four times this season he has run for 100 or more yards in a single game, and he's got the first down as he runs into Surratt after four yards. And the chains will move for the Bears. So this is their first significant progress offensively. Well, this is exactly what I was talking about with the, the slow and low. The tempo, if you will, for the Bears to just chip, chip away. Two yards, three yards here and there. Get yourself in a third down and manageable. It's almost like the, the feel of an option attack. you got to get positive yards. Quick pass is just short of a 40. Tucker Cannon, the junior, makes a six-yard grab. Gibble on the tackle for North Carolina. And one thing, Tom, that Devison will give you is if you can you can establish him and get some success, they do like the play-action pass a lot offensively. And if you can get the, the run working, that play-action pass, obviously, is a lot more effective. Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator over there, calling the shots. A couple of players ran into each other in the backfield, although they get the pass away. McKee makes the catch, and a little smirk there from <laughs> Caitlin Riley. Everything worked out fine. First down. Uh, that was fun to see. I mean, hey, no sweat, and nobody over there to cover. I mean, you, you get some trouble in the backfield and still get it off. Hey, whatever. It worked, right? Moving those sticks. Kalen Riley having a good time. What a great team player. Like I mentioned earlier, Robert Riddle was a starter last year, got hurt. Well, you know, James, you can't blame Devison for wanting the ball. He ran it 29 times last week. <laughs> Hey, just, just keep giving it to me. That's it. Yeah, that, that isn't the play action I was talking about, Tom. I don't think you're fooling many people there. Jay Bateman, defensive coordinator for North Carolina. Co-defensive coordinator with Tommy Thigpen. First year for each. Former defensive coordinator at Army. of teams that won 29 games in the last three seasons. Here's the ninth play of the drive for the Bears, second and nine. Devison. Solid run, and for more on that quarterback for the Bears, Kalen Riley, here's Kelsey on the sidelines. Yeah, this is his second year to take over as quarterback midseason, like you guys said, with the injuries to Robert Riddle, and he told me last year really taught him that those injuries can happen at any time, so now he really understands he has no choice but to stay ready, and he said this year he took that even more seriously. He's been watching a lot more film, and I asked him, after your experience last year, were you that much more confident coming into it this season he said I've been playing this game I know what I can do I'm confident in my abilities guys he's in for Robert Riddle who had thrown 15 TD passes was injured against VMI and Riley's on target to McKee and that's a first down with just over six minutes to go in the first quarter and nine yards on the play for Mercer nice job by the freshman they call Frizz Frizz McKee Good job, too, by Riley going down and getting that ball. Low and outside, snap. And a nice job by McKee to look it in and get upfield, move those chains. Impressive little drive here by the Mercer Bears as they try to answer the quick 14 they gave. Both times, great field position for North Carolina. Well-devised play from Bobby Lamb, seventh-year head coach. That pass is incomplete near the 20-yard line. Durden went up against two defenders. Don Chapman's over 13. He was back there, and Storm Duck. Well, with all the injuries in the secondary, Don Chapman, one of those guys who's been forced to play and play a lot early. The freshman from San Diego, in that first career start, he has first interception early in the game against Georgia Tech a few weeks back and could have had him a nice interception. Easy one right there. Bateman's really high on a guy that he recruited to Army when he was back there as a defensive coordinator. Devison gets denied. Only a yard. So rat. And also Miles Dorn, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. He wears number one. 
go. Check out it right there in the middle. Getting more and more comfortable with what's going on. You know, you know what tells me when you watch Chaz Surratt on tape now? He doesn't run himself into trouble. And, and that's what a good linebacker does. He doesn't, he doesn't panic and get too caught up in everything that's going on. You get locked up on an offensive lineman. Hey, let that, let all the junk clear out. Go make a play. And he's got the ability to do just that. There's a third down long now. Third and nine. Inside the 30 to McKee and a first down for the Bears. 14 yards, James. Ross was in coverage. Well, Riley standing in there. The pressure's going to come on in a nice route run again by McKee. Right there at the sticks. And how many times have we talked about it? You just, just know where they're breaking those routes off at. Dominique Ross needs to know what they're trying to do, what they're trying to get to. The senior lets him break it off right in front a little bit too soft. And again, just chipping away on this long drive. 13 plays now. Four catches in the game for McKee. Out to the left. About the 28-yard line or so for Durden on the diving catch. He's the leading receiver on the team, has four TD catches this season. Only two yards, though. Pressure was coming from Fox, got those hands up. And, you know, hey, it, it may not look like much the two-yard gain, but again, you're talking with the coaches, Bill Legg, offensive coordinator for Mercer, give me two yards. It's, it's an NFL mentality at times, he told us, where two or three yards is just fine for this offense here today. Day, and they'll take that too. Just go positive, go forward. Play number 15 on the drive will have to wait. A couple of penalty markers out. And remember, this drive started with a running into the kicker penalty. False start. Offense number 70. Five yard penalty. Second down. That's Forrestal, the left guard. You'll see him right there. You see him in a little booty shape. And everyone's on it wearing the light blue uniforms pointing at him. And, and, and you can't help out. We saw some help from Durden with the fumble early and then the penalty. And a momentum, 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 especially when you're the underdog. Can't move five yards backward. The drive that started at the seven-yard line. Devinson on the run. After the pass from Riley. Five yards. Surratt, Ross. Involved in the play against Devinson. Boy, Surratt. The junior on senior day is trying to make every single play out here. Look at that. Gosh. I'm glad 21's back next year because he's been so much fun to watch here in his first year in a long time of playing linebacker, playing any defense. Can't imagine what he's going to be like with a full offseason under his belt and after this year, this big junior year. Third down and 10. And that, by the way, a five-yard gain. This now should be about a third down and three. But with the penalties moved back. Two for four on third down. This pass hits the artificial surface. Past Cannon. Morrison was defending. He's fought an arm injury a couple times this season for North Carolina. It's going to bring up fourth down. You see right on cue to Trey Morrison kind of working that arm a little bit, right? As, as you mentioned, that arm injury. Well set up for a long field goal try here after that long drive by the Mercer Bears. Dowden from 46 yards away. He's long this season, 45. They're going to fake it. They're going to throw. That's the backup quarterback, Harrison Frost, and it was deflected away. Looked like North Carolina was ready for that as Duck was back there. Told you it was a good day for Ducks. Excellent job by the freshman. Freshman aware. Hey, here comes Mercer. Nothing to lose. Tried the fake field goal, and look at it. That's about as good as you can cover. Not surprised at all. And even better that he didn't get that foot down. Knocks it away. They're I think they'll take a look at this. Is what the belt? Was it, was the turnover it? belt, James. Yeah, they're they're looking at it. I don't think yeah. he got the interception, but let him Let's have his fun with the belt. Let's see. I mean, the left uh, foot looked like it was still well, down, didn't it, James? 
Ooh, that, that's a close one. That, that's one if you're a Carolina fan, you, you, you'd rather it not go your way. I know Storm Duck would like to have that interception, but, you know, it's a, it's a difference between a, a few yards. Ooh, it's tough. You know, you, that would be his first interception of the season and the ninth for North Carolina. Miles Wolfolk leads the way with three interceptions. Had two in that enormous win at Bank of America Stadium to start the season for North Carolina with the fourth quarter comeback against South Carolina. Storm with a season high seven tackles in that big Virginia game. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It'll be first and ten, Carolina. Bring that belt back out. The first quarter interception for Duck. So the longest drive of the season in terms of plays and time for Mercer ends with the interception by Storm Duck. Ball back to the Tar Heels. And with that, here's our athletic trivia question. <laughs> now you're getting it, James. <laughs> Perfect. That'll be coming up later. We'll certainly have that. So as the Tar Heels come out offensively and get four yards on that first play, you will not see Daz Newsom in uniform today, number five. He is suspended for this game. And source is very close to the North Carolina football program telling us he overslept and missed a practice earlier this week. And so Newsom not available for the Tar Heels. Leading receiver, 57 catches for Newsom, seven TDs, but not allowed to be in the building and suspended for this game against Mercer James. I hate that. I hate that for Daz. A couple weeks ago, we sat down with him. What a joy it was to talk shop with him. And just looking forward to seeing him today coming off of that big week he had in the pit game. ACC wide receiver of the week with a career high, 11 catches, 170 yards, and a touchdown. He's just a 100-yard receiving machine, but costing his team. And hopefully all of them learn their lesson with that. Deep ball from Howell and Stride and on schedule. Diamond Brown to the end zone for the Tar Heels. Just as Newsom is a 100-yard a game pass-catching machine, this guy right here, the sophomore, Deami Brown, is an explosive play machine. Tenth touchdown of the season, 19.3, the average of yards per catch. That one well over and had a big-time catch, but a perfect throw once again by Howard. Two rushing touchdowns and one through the air. Howell to Brown. They collaborate for a 66-yard TD pass. Bottom of your screen here. It's just the scary speed on the perimeter that North Carolina has and that the Mercer coaches told us they were worried about. You can't let them go with the big play. you got to stay on top. And so tough to do. A lot easier said than done. A little double move. Plenty of time for Sam Howe to drop it in there perfectly for number two. Namaste. 146 to go in the first quarter, and Sam Howell has his 30th TD pass of the season. Phil Longo, his offensive coordinator, can smile at that one. He has now tied Mitch Trubisky from 2016 with those 30 TD passes. Absolutely destroyed the freshman record weeks ago. And in all likelihood, he's going to set the school record for TD passes in a season. He has now tied Trubisky at 30. Hey, you see the smile on Longo's face? He told us yesterday, he said, when you've got a quarterback like Sam Howell that is addicted to the grind of it all, addicted to, to being a student of the game, you're in, you're in pretty good shape. And he's got a great one off of the field as well. Another long drive for the Tar Heels this season. Now 28 drives of 70 yards or more for touchdowns. And Sam Howell has been a big part of that success. 30 TD passes to tie Trubisky. That's our Sonovus greatness made here feature. And Trubisky was such a good one here. And Sam Howell 
He may be as, as good as any of them that have come through here in college football, for that matters. He's just getting started. And, and the scary thing is, when they get some guys healthy and when they get into it in the next couple of years, this is an offense that asks the quarterback to run the football. But they've been scared to death to run him because they can't afford him getting hurt. Jace Ruder being injured. They, there's no depth at all at quarterback. And, you know, Tom, he's... He's very durable, you know, maybe the just young and resilient being a true freshman, but he was sacked five times against Pitt. He's gone up against some of the best defenses in the land, and he's hung in there. He's, he's done a good job still talking with Longo of taking care of the football against some of those great defenses, too. No interceptions against Miami or South Carolina or Clemson. He's thrown for over 2,800 yards this season. That is also a freshman school record and second best in the country among freshmen as he just went for 66 yards to Diami Brown. Remember, he had five touchdown passes in that epic game at Virginia Tech. Six overtimes that we had the honor of calling. In the end, it was Virginia Tech winning that game, but Howell set a freshman school record and tied the school record with those five TD passes in Blacksburg against the Hokies. We'll also have a big game today as they host Pittsburgh. As we try to figure out what it's going to look like in the Coastal Division and who will represent that side of the league in Charlotte, North Carolina. We know that the Clemson Tigers are going for the fifth straight year and seventh appearance in the championship game that sets an ACC record. Great visit with this guy right here, the senior from Deerfield Beach, Florida, Jason Strobridge. Just cat-like quickness. As you take a look at him, lined up right here outside, just a swim move. I mean, just a big Toro, like a bullfighter, he gives the offensive lineman no chance to block him. And what he does, he doesn't just run by him, but comes back under control, football position, and drops him. Fourth down as we head to the second quarter. The first 15 minutes belong to the Tar Heels as they salute 19 seniors and come out strong. A couple of rushing TDs and a long TD toss by Sam Howell to Deami Brown, 21-0. End of the first in Chapel Hill. Check this out. Oh, okay. You know that? Grand finale. Oh! I like that, man. Sir bounces just inside the 40 and takes a bare bounce to the 36 from Gopal. 34 yards on the punt. There is no return. How about the field position? Once again, to start for North Carolina. Right on the doorstep to begin this game after the quick turnover, the fumble by Durden. Then one start after the penalty on the punt helped out. Started about midfield. This one will be up across their own 35. 163 yards of total offense in the first quarter. This is Howell. He's on the run up near midfield. First down as he goes out of bounds. Howell was 3 for 3 through the air, James, in the first quarter. 83 yards and a 66-yard TD pass to Deami Brown, his 30th of the season. 17 yards on the run from Howell. There, there you see to start the second quarter, some yards on the ground as we look at the first quarter stats. That time of possession hasn't taken long. They haven't had a long way to go. It was 240 holding the ball in the first uh, first quarter, but three touchdowns as Antonio Williams, a senior, comes back into the game. And, and that, that first play, I think you expect to see maybe even next week, Tom. It's, hey, it's NC State is banged up. They This is a banged up North Carolina team as well. Not quite as bad as NC State, though. It's, it's just been a nightmare over there with injuries. But when you're playing for a bowl, he, he may start a little bit more of the running game against that Wolfpack next week up the middle and first down antonio williams inspired running from number 24 and a senior he got 10 yards second year in a carolina uniform after transferring from ohio state with the north stanley high school and from new london connecticut here he goes williams at the 10 and knocked to the turf at the five yard line antonio williams luke ward on the tackle 
about that? Kelsey told you earlier about Mac Brown and the praises. Look at the hole he has to run through. Great job by the offensive line up front. Jordan Tucker and company leading the way. But, you know, how many guys in that situation are going to pout a little bit? They're not getting the ball enough. Yet Mac Brown calls him the most upbeat guy he's ever been around. That says a lot about 24, who, by the way, wants our jobs. He wants, he wants to that. work in TV when it's all done. But first, he wants to give it a shot in the NFL, of course. Going after you, Bates, after no, a 26-yard run. Tom. Back into the red zone, inside the five, Michael Carter. Forced back. Kith Cart making the tackle along with Luke Ward. And a couple of those banged up Mercer Bears are out there contributing today. Kith Cart is a senior that fought his way back. Will Conaway as well. Kith Cart, a great leader for this defense. Trying to slow him down a little bit here. One for one in the red zone. Javante Williams, the third back. Primarily used by the Tar Heels this season. Under about the three-yard line or so. Gian on the tackle. Seventh-year head coach Bobby Lamb. Longtime head coach at Furman University in the Southern Conference. He was also an accomplished quarterback there. Played for a national championship in his days at quarterback for the Paladins. Powell looking to the end zone. He's got a man. He's got a touchdown. Jake Vargas. TD for Carolina for four yards out. He had a few options there. There's a perfect example of what establishing that run game can do to a defense. Get to a spot where you feel like you can't win. You got to help out your buddies and shut down the run, but you also vacate a lot of those zones getting in the way of the quarterback. Extra point is good. A quick score in the second quarter. There's the play action fake to Antonio Williams, and take your pick. Goes Vargas in the back of the end zone. Sam Howell with touchdown. Not City, Missouri. ACC College Football is brought to you by your local Ford dealer. The Works Tryback, now 10% off. Order now. And Z-Max Micro Lubricant, available at AutoZone. Boy, what a special day. I remember it well walking out and, and hugging Mama out there in the swamp of, <laughs> quite a while back and taking care of the seniors. Jake Vargas from down in South Florida. He's a senior as well. And look at his touchdown. But if you're if you're going into an opponent's senior day, you get down near the goal line, I'd, I'd put all eyes on the seniors, trying to take care of those guys. Vargas, one of them, and you see how much his teammates like him. Now, wait a minute, James. On the graphic, you saw a picture of Vargas. I don't think he's had a haircut since he took that picture that we showed, yeah. Yeah. contrasted yeah. with the salad that he's been able to cultivate right. over the last few years. It's, it's nice. It looks it's like Slash. His second catch of the season and second career TD catch, and what a moment for yet another senior for these Tar Heels. Antonio Williams already has a TD run. He's a senior. So that's two passing TDs and two rushing TDs in the game for North Carolina, up 28-0. Having a laugh and a chuckle with his teammates after that catch from Vargas in the back of the end zone. Senior from Boca Raton, Florida. So far, a great day for Carolina and its seniors. An 11th straight game for Sam Howell with multiple touchdowns. He's up to 31 now. And that pass by Riley ends up on the synthetic grass to David Durden, the sophomore. DeAndre Hollins was back in coverage for the North Carolina Tar Heels. Hollins is really impressed. Coach Mac Brown and Jay Bateman, his defensive coordinator. He was a nickel back, and when Storm Duck got hurt early against Duke, first play, if I'm not mistaken, he's playing nickel. They said, all right, we got to have you. It's... Boy, it, it has not been fair, the injuries 
that they've seen to that secondary here in Chapel Hill. One of the many reasons why this is going to be a scary football team. That and all the youth next year. It's Riley on the run. The pass complete. McKee, he's been a popular receiver for the Mercer Bears. Storm Duck made the play for North Carolina seven yards. Keep in mind, Mercer is a program that was reinstated in 2013. Coach Lamb had been there two years prior to that to get things started with practices and recruiting. Yeah, how about that? He <laughs> said it was like going out to the driving range, just practicing all day, but never being allowed to go out and play golf. As Kelsey mentioned at the top of the broadcast, a 72-year hiatus for this program as McKee gets hit by Hollins. They dropped the program after 1941 and the United States' involvement in World War II. Still looking for their first appearance in the FCS playoffs. They've had some good seasons in the Southern Conference. Quality football championship subdivision conference. Offense still out there, Tom, on fourth down and one. Most importantly up front, as the defensive lineman trying to get this crowd into it. And just a moment ago, <laughs> Miles Dorn and his uh, father, Torin Dorn, a North Carolina running back and defensive back in the late 80s. And Torin recognized here in the final home game of the season for North Carolina. Nice moment, yeah. father and son, fourth down. We played for Matt Brown. Mm. Devison got stopped, a loss of two on fourth down. Well, leading the charge, tackle number six unofficially. Jazz Surratt, Strobridge in there as well. Absolutely nowhere to go for Devison. Boy, and, and even it held up there, Aaron Crawford as well in the middle of the pack. Just swarming the football on a fourth down and one. Here comes that field position one more time. Watch out. Howell with the time. Throws it to the end zone. It's a touchdown, North Carolina. Emory Simmons makes the catch. 33 yards from Howell. The smile on how he's pretty even keel doesn't show a lot of emotion but he's having a good time right now just moments ago his teammates hugging him up dancing around him in a big way as he breaks mitch trubisky's record and now he's just adding on to it his third touchdown pass of the day and another beauty that one went for 33 yards to emory simmons the freshman has his first TD catch of the season. That is now three touchdown passes from Sam Howell, and this time he finds the minute for a touchdown for North Carolina. Drives up 24 seconds, 59 seconds, and that last one was one play in just seven seconds. <laughs> and the catch made by Emory Simmons, and the freshman has his first TD in a Carolina uniform. 35 to nothing, Tar Heels. That's Durden pinballing his way. Past the 20 yard line, he's got popped a couple of times. There's a look at a lot of those quick strikes started on the ground. And then it was the beautiful 66 yarder to Deami Brown, Jake Vargas, Emory Simmons. The ongoing factor here is, is nobody's come close. You know, it's a breath of fresh air probably for Longo and his quarterback, Hal, after being sacked five times against Pitt, it was a rough one. And the loss to Pitt in overtime, one more close game. And here he's, he's got all the time in the world. There he had a chance to let Simmons come out of his break and wall off the defender. Pass is incomplete. There's always the chance with North Carolina needing this victory this week and maybe peeking ahead to NC State coming up next week in Raleigh. And that has not happened one iota today. 35 to nothing. Mac Brown and the Tar Heels. And Coach Phil Longo told us the preparation, regardless of the opponent, is always the same. And today, the recipe has been a couple of rushing TDs and three through the air for Sam Howell. That's now 32 for his freshman campaign. 
with at least one more game to go as NC State is on the schedule next week. That game last year was here against the Wolfpack, and it went to overtime. You were here. I was here. Woo. That was a good one. Incredible football game to end the year. Well, and I, and I don't care what's going on over there in Raleigh as far as the entries go when these two meet up next week. They're, they're going to get one heck of a shot from the Wolfpack, who will be playing, in essence, their bowl game. That's what they, that'll that'll be their season, and they'll put it all on the line. So it should be one heck of a game. Well, they they still had a chance to be bowl eligible as the week started, but lost at Georgia Tech. This is intercepted, but there's a flag just beyond the 25-yard line. It's Greg Ross, but there's a flag on the play. Tar Heels already have one interception. That was Storm Duck earlier in this half. Holding, defense number 10. 10 yard penalty, automatic, first down. Marcus Woods is our referee. The penalty will nullify the interception from Greg Ross. There you see him over here on the left, gonna get his hands up on him, just trying to hang on as he's coming out of that break. At least he's got the right colored gloves on. That's that's one thing you got to you start with, because you're gonna hold, you're gonna hold at some point. So at least wear the same colored gloves to match the uniforms so it blends in a little bit. Doesn't get away with it there. And Ross has had a lot of pass breakups for his defensive coordinator Jay Bateman this year. Down guilty and gets the flag right there, helping Mercer out with a first down and ten now. Tar Heels eighth in the ACC in total defense. Stepping out of conference this week to take on the Bears. Durden made the catch and got dropped near the 30. Loss of two. In fact, North Carolina for the fourth straight year playing a team out of the Southern Conference. Played Western Carolina in mid-November last year and beat them 49-26 here at Keenan Memorial Stadium. The three offensive linemen starters injured and out for this game. A couple big ones for the season. Guys like left tackle Austin Sanders. And, and yet Riley and company, they've done a good job of getting that ball out quick. They have to. Have no choice a lot of times. Devison. Jaleel Taylor's number 52 from Carolina Blue. Only two yards for Devison. Taylor, a redshirt freshman, Vienna, Georgia. Six feet and 300 pounds running off that field. Getting some substitutions, getting some guys healthy. You know, and, and that's what it's all about, let's face it. And that's one thing that should be taken care of if, in a hurry. If Brown and his staff continue to recruit like they've started off here this year, is depth. The great teams, there's no doubt about it, they've got depth. And everybody's getting banged up this time of year. you got to have some depth. Deep pass, incomplete. McKee was the receiver for the Bears. Gimmel hustling back from his linebacker position. How about that linebacker out there on a receiver? You know, we make a big deal, and justifiably so, on 21. It's a fun story. He came over from quarterback, and yeah, he makes play after play. But, but Jeremiah Gimmel, he, he's fun to watch. I've really enjoyed watching him. Was bummed a couple games ago. We had him at State when he had the targeting and, and was ejected because I really enjoy watching him on tape. He's, he's a heady linebacker, and he has had a lot to do with the maturation of Chaz Surratt. He's done a lot, a lot in holding his hand. Well, three touchdown passes in the game. 66 yards, 4 yards, and 33 yards. Putting it on the money. There it is to his big senior tight end in the back of the end zone. Vargas, here's the freshman Simmons getting involved. And then when it was announced after 31, touchdown number 31, look at his team celebrating with him. Mosh pit all around Sam Howell, who's back in the game right now. Up 35 to nothing. 32 TD passes in his freshman season. Efficient, effective. Yes, All kinds of points for the Tar Heels. Three through the air. A couple of rushing TDs. One from Michael Carter and one from Antonio Williams to start the scoring from 11 yards away. Groves and a first down. Eric Jackson, one of the all-time leading tacklers in the history of the Mercer program. And Sam Howell 
with 32 TD passes, eclipses Trevor Lawrence for freshman, true freshman touchdown passes in a season. Jameis Winston, a redshirt freshman, when he achieved that number. And so the true freshman record in the football bowl subdivision now, according to North Carolina Sports Information, belongs to Sam Howell with the 32 TD passes. Going past Trevor Lawrence. His Clemson Tigers are off and getting ready for their game against South Carolina to close out the regular season at home next week. But they will be in Charlotte December 7th for the ACC championship game, their fifth straight appearance. Going for five in a row, James. Hey, and not too long ago, it looked like just like Jameis Winston that Sam Howell was going to be a Florida State Seminole. He had committed to Florida State in the 2018 Gatorade North Carolina Player of the Year, then switched over when Mac Brown got the job here. Second stint as head coach for Mac Brown. He's watching Michael Carter accelerate and pull away. Michael Carter down to the 20. Jackson had to make the tackle, but not before a gain of 31 yards. Michael Carter. Wow, a lot like his touchdown run. Look at the patience making one guy miss. And then boom, it's off to the races. And you know, and the ability to bring a load too. Nice little power and pop. He's a great combination in a back. Owl's pass near the 11 is incomplete. Despite that incompletion to Bo Corrales, Owl's now thrown for six touchdowns in the last two games. And the OT loss at Pittsburgh on Thursday, November 14th, the most recent game for Carolina. He had three TD passes and threw for 322 yards. One of those passes went to Bo Corrales. He had a career high five catches in the big game against Pitt. That was also the first incompletion of the game for Sam Howell. And for more on the freshman quarterback, down to Kelsey. I was talking to Charlie Heck earlier this week, and I asked him, you know, what allows a true freshman in Sam Howell to cause the kind of disruption he's caused to opposition this season? And he said he's unbelievably poised. We've heard that all the time. You know, he's never rattled. He said if he has a bad play, you know he's going to make up for it with a touchdown pass. And he said obviously being a coach's son helps with that. But he says Sam has something inside of him that not many people have. And he remembers the first time he saw his arm talent and summer OTAs competing for the starting job. He wasn't even the starter coming into the year because he's a freshman and he said he knew he was special and he solidified that once they got to the game and he saw his poise in that huddle, guys. Well, Kelsey, he'll stay out there now with a fourth down and short. A substitution, so a chance for the Bears to match. And we'll see what they've got up their sleeve here on fourth and very short. Go back under center. They'll go up the middle with Javante Williams and get the first down. That was the 21st time this season they've gone forward on fourth down, and they make it for the 13th time on fourth and short. And I know they're going to give me a hard time in the truck because anytime I bring up the Gators, they do. But it's again good company. A guy, one of my freshman brothers, that wore that number seven Heisman Trophy winner, Danny Warfel. They're very similar. Nothing, nothing phased him. Even even the head ball coach just yelling at him all the time. You got to be thick skinned to play for Coach Spurrier. But the, the precision of his throws. And, and, you know, not a world beater, doesn't look like athlete, but will do everything he can to beat you. And James, that's Michael Carter into the end zone. <laughs> Took a sharp angle inside the pylon from nine yards out. And the Tar Heels and Mac Brown are back in the end zone. Well, Robert Gillespie, the running back coach here for Mac Brown, he's got his backs running hungry. Finding that paint one more time. Third touchdown on the ground by his backs. Antonio Williams getting involved as well. And a couple for Michael Carver, the junior from Navarre, Florida. Second rushing TD of the game and second rushing TD of the season for Michael Carter. Nine yards away to go along with his 45-yard TD run in the first quarter. You know, it's also, it's going to be a nice job here by Emory Simmons getting on Richie Coffey. Holding up a little bit, giving him an, an option anyway to cut it back inside. Doing a good job, too, and not to blindside. 
But setting that up and making, making him freeze and go flat-footed, Michael Carter doing all the work. Carter up to 99 yards for the game and two TDs. Yeah, the Tar Heels had just four rushing touchdowns, but they've got three today. And Howell also has three TD passes. On the season? That's correct. Wow. Coming into the game, rushing-wise, Javante Williams had three TD runs, and Sam Howell had one for your four prior to this afternoon against Mercer. Durden from the goal line, leaping for the 20-yard line. You know, James, this is the 132nd season of North Carolina football, but just the second all-time meeting between the teams. Let's sort out the penalty first. Referee is Marcus Woods, who will consult before providing the official announcement. 42-0 Tar Heels, a monster first half against the Mercer Bears from the football championship subdivision. Outside, kicking team number 25. The five-yard penalty be added to the end of the play. First down. You have to go very deep in the record books to find the first meeting between the teams. 1925, North Carolina went on the road. And that is our startup, brought to you by the Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. Yeah, that 25 Bear team, offensively, they didn't have you. <laughs> Calvin Coolidge, the president of the United States back in 1925. Mm. Uh, good hard running. Looked like he was going to be dropped for a loss of a couple. But again, Tyree Devison, the junior, out of Woodstock, Georgia, refusing to go down what could have been a second down in, in 11 or 12, perhaps. Some pretty good tacklers missed right there, and he doesn't. It's just all effort to gain about three or four. Now, a lot of connections from way back with North Carolina and Georgia and the city of Macon, Tom. Mm. Uh -oh. Swing it out. Is that a fumble? Hey, you better hop on it. Make sure. Well, the whistle blew, so that stopped the play with 2.35 to go in the second quarter. So making the heart of Georgia was named after a North Carolina statesman, Nathaniel Macon. And because of the many early residents of Georgia who were from North Carolina, there's the tie-in. There you go. See, look at that. That's, Ooh, that's, that's ball, close. Tom. That ball's thrown behind. And even with the whistle being blown, that just means you can't advance it. Mm. Better hurry and snap it. Shot clock going off, too. That's incomplete up past the 35. Love the history lesson there, James, about Mick and Georgia. We're just trying to keep up with our stats guy, Freddie. I love it. Freddie Carger is proud of you. <laughs> How about 1892? You know what happened in 1892? A Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Georgia Tech's first ever football opponent was Mercer in 1892. And that's the most played opponent out of the ACC for Mercer. They are 1-16 in 16 against Georgia Tech. Maybe he came over to see Mercer play. I think it was 1492 for Columbus. I was way off. It's all right. Fair catch made. Rontavius Toe Groves. 42-0, but first a quick word from Advance Auto Parts. I can sign 12 autographs in 6 seconds. So reminding you to check your battery this fast, easy. Tar Heels have rolled up 195 yards on the ground. Amongst that 144 yards through the air, three TD passes from Sam Howell, who will stay in the game for this series late in the second quarter. Michael Carter, the back on the move. They send it to Carter, lowers the shoulder at the 30, and breaks on through to the 35-yard line. First down, North Carolina, 11 yards. Andrew Pettit had the tackle, 45 and white. You know, up 42 to nothing still. Here's an opportunity to run a two-minute offense. We may not see much of, if we see him at all, Sam Howell in the second half, so 
Phil Longo. You never know when you're going to need these reps. It's a team like NC State next week, but different plans defensively. A nice chop down by the heart and soul of this defense. The safety, Eric Jackson, sniffing it out in a hurry. Nice drop. Jackson, second in school history in career tackles. Just, just avoiding the block altogether. Again, don't mess with him. You don't have to. Come underneath, but you better make the play if you come underneath. Howell's pass is incomplete. Groves unable to clutch that football. Thirty-two TD passes on the season for Sam Howell. How about the future for this North Carolina program and that man, Mac Brown? First year, second stint, eleventh year as the head coach of North Carolina, Hall of Famer. Mac Brown has 248 career wins. This is the first time he's ever coached against Mercer. Howell buying some time and throwing. It is caught. On his way to the end zone is Toe Groves for the North Carolina touchdown. Offense number 68. 10 yard penalty. And it's coming back. Holding penalty nullifies the 68-yard TD toss to Groves from Howell. Would have been his fourth of the day. Oh, what a pretty ball. It's going to be the center that they called it on right here, Brian Anderson. And nobody getting close to Howell. And, and there you see the one half, they had the back of the jersey and his, Anderson's arm wrapped around him. And what a shame, a beautifully thrown football to the leader of that wide receiver room, Toe Groves. But instead, now it's third down and 23. Would have been the second TD catch of the season for Groves. Still the touch and precision on that football, on the run, moving to his left. And throwing it down the field. Trying to get away from the bare pressure. Unloads it. Incomplete. 110 to go in the quarter. And now it's fourth and very long for North Carolina. They've had so many close games this season, James. Nine games decided by seven points or less. Most in the football bowl subdivision. And the most by any team since 1936. This one, not the same situation. In fact, the first punt for North Carolina upcoming. Tucker Cannon, the deep man. Ben Kiernan, the freshman from Dublin, Ireland. To punt from his eight-yard line. Fair catch. And made at the 34. The punt from Kiernan of 45 yards. Cannon, the fair catch. And now, a quick word from Works. The Works Tryvac 3-in-1 Easy Switch from Blow to Vac is a game changer and a time saver. Your yard work champion. 42-0 Carolina. 103 to go in our second quarter. Tom Worthy, James Bates, Kelsey Winger braving the elements down on the field today. She got the tough assignment because it's been a steady drizzle. And attempts, which started in the high 40s, appear to be going down late afternoon as we approach the 5 o'clock hour on the Eastern Seaboard and here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So glad that you're with us to watch the seniors for the Tar Heels play in their final game. And the seniors for Mercer, for that matter, as well, playing in their final game. Yeah. This will be the last game of the season for Mercer with its 4-7 and seven record and 3-5 and five in conference play. Hang in there, Kelsey. We're in the Carrier Dome next week. Oh, is, is that where we're going next yeah. week? Oh, yeah, don't oh, you I'm just know. Here it. Breaking Syracuse news. Syracuse grad, yeah. <laughs> Breaking news to the Dome to finish yeah. what has been a season full of excitement. And, James, when you look back at it, the Tar Heels provided a lot of that for us this year. Big stick on defense. Dominic Ross 
on McKee. Dropped him for a two-yard loss. I mean, how about the last time we were here at Keenan Memorial Stadium? Duke in North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. North Carolina was going in to steal this game, fumbled, and then Surratt made the interception on the goal line against the Blue Devils. Well, it's funny you should bring up that game because that guy right there, number three, had a huge game. Had the forced fumble, the stack, the interception in that game. The senior from Jacksonville, Florida. The coach is talking about how he's... He's, he's been able to do things. They're asking him to do things that they weren't sure he could do, but he's he stepped up in a big way for him defensively. We also had the Tar Heels game against Appalachian State, which went down to the final play. A loss, 34-31 for North Carolina, late September. And we did the six-overtime game at Virginia Tech, where, unfortunately, someone had to lose that one, and it was the Tar Heels. A big first half. From Matt Brown and North Carolina to the locker room with a 42 to nothing lead. And in the process against Mercer. And I feel safe in that assumption. It would be on to bowl eligibility. And the last time North Carolina was in a bowl game, 2016, the Sun Bowl, which they lost to Stanford in El Paso, Texas. Antonio Williams regathers, sidesteps one man, and gets out near the 40-yard line. He is one of the seniors honored today. 19 seniors for the Tar Heels. 24 yards on the return from Williams. And he has an 11-yard TD run. So based on that huddle, and the fact that Sam Howell doesn't have his helmet on, a couple of clues that he's not coming out, because here comes Vincent Amendola, the freshman from Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah, and this normally would have been Jace Reuter. Reuter, number 10, we've seen him a couple times on the sidelines with Sam Howell. And here's Vincent Amendola, the freshman. And Coach Longo tells us he can spin. He says he throws a deep ball as good as anyone, so beware. He'll hand this one off. Michael Carter running away from Mercer. 60 yards and Michael Carter. Quarterback over there to slap him on the hat, and that's three touchdowns today for Michael Carter. And as you mentioned earlier, Tom, just four on the ground for the whole team coming in this season. So the extra point good from a 60-yarder. That one was for 45 yards. It's our power play brought to you by Honda Generators and 159 yards rushing for Michael Carter. Yeah, tonight has been a little bit through the air and handed to number eight, and he's out the gate. Nobody even close to him on that last touchdown run of 60 yards. The junior. He can, he's, a, he's a good pass catcher as well. The 60-yarder by Carter. A career-long run, and he took it to the end zone. Durden goes out of bounds on a return. Early stages of the third quarter. North Carolina scored early and often in the first half. They've done the second half and started the same way with Michael Carter. <laughs> He's smiling for the camera. <laughs> Hi, Michael. It's a staring contest. Yeah, I guess so. Not you just blinked on he won. <laughs> Michael Carter, part of the offensive onslaught by North Carolina against Mercer out of the football championship subdivision and the Southern Conference. Fourth straight year that the Tar Heels have taken on a SOCON team. The Tar Heels spent some time in the Southern Conference way back in the day. From 1922 to 1952, they were members of the SOCON and won the league three times. That's back in the days of Charlie Choo Choo Justice. 22. Yeah, two-time Heisman runner-up in the 1948 National Player of the Year. Choo-choo. Devison.
Mercer not af afraid to play the big time programs. After 2017, as Kelsey mentioned earlier, they played Auburn and Alabama. Played competitively against Auburn. This year against the Tar Heels. Played Georgia Tech back in 2016, but lost in Atlanta 35-10. And a relatively new program returning to the scene in 2013 and joining the SoCon in 2014. Was the program reinstated, James? So it's a nice play that time. And I believe it was thought it was three at first, but I think it was Contre Jackson, the linebacker, fight off his block. Excellent job. Force a third down and long. If it's a catch, it might be enough, but it's incomplete. That was McKee, the freshman from Stockbridge, Georgia. And that brings a fourth down. Bobby Lamb, 96 career wins in the SOCOM. Most of those coming with the Furman program, fourth in conference history. That name, Lamb, in the state of Georgia. That means football, that's for sure. I mean, what, a, what an interesting family when it comes to the sport of football that Bobby Lamb is a part of. Gopal's punt to Groves at the 30. He's got it there. 12.37 on the clock into the game. Charlie Heck, the senior from Kansas City, Missouri. With his head coach, Mac Brown. On an emotional day for the seniors. And with his parents and for more on Charlie Heck, down to Kelsey. Special day for Charlie Heck. His dad, Andy Heck, is the offensive line coach for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's only been able to watch Charlie play live three different times in college. It's only able to happen when the Chiefs' bye week falls on a week that allows him to come here. He was able to be here today. And Charlie also told me his brother, John, played football here at UNC. And he said... When he was in high school, he was just waiting on the UNC offer because he had fallen in love with Chapel Hill and North Carolina with coming here with his brother playing. He said he had a couple of offers before UNC, but he was just waiting for that one to come. And guys, he said his favorite memory from his years here was when they beat Duke this season. He said, I will never forget that atmosphere and I will never forget going over and running to get that victory bell, which is on display here today, guys. Yeah, Kelsey's brother, John, now a strength coach. so. Little family reunion after he played here was a four-year starter. His dad played at Notre Dame and then was a first-round pick by the Seahawks. That's, that's special. I know from my playing days, my dad was an NFL coach, and rarely do they ever get a chance to come and see. It. And there it is. There's that bell that Kelsey was talking about. It's got to feel good for those guys to get it back in Chapel Hill, especially to go out as a senior on top in that big rivalry. And, and when it comes to Heck and, and his future, the one thing that they'll never question around here is how tough he is. Then that showed, you go back to that weight game, and he played the game with a broken hand, got missed a little bit, was, was back there in a hurry, playing injured, very tough guy and a great leader that they'll miss around these parts. And Mandola's pass was incomplete to Green, but there's a flag on the play. It was thrown near the 35-yard line on the Mercer side of the 50. Charlie Heck is also a triplet. Sisters Molly and Evelyn. They're fouled by both teams. And they'll be playing down field. Number 72, offense. Pass in the fears. Defense, number 12. The field is offset. Third down. By the way, Molly and Evelyn both graduated from Notre Dame like Dad. Wow. Andy. Well, he's the oldest of those triplets. There it is with the fresh paint job. Carolina football. As the Tar Heels ringing the victory bell. Duke had won that victory bell three times in a row. But this time around, and we were, we were privileged to call that game. Wow, what a finish that was. Yeah, One of the more incredible finishes that I've ever seen, and, and we have seen several this season, James, but we referenced it in the first half. North Carolina was about to seal the game against Duke, and they fumbled. 
And that Duke drove it almost the length of the field. And Surratt came up with the interception at the goal line with 14 seconds left. Well, what an amazing play, too. Duke so close to winning four in a row. And how about the athleticism to bring that ball in, Chaz Surratt, on that little pop pass. And, you know, after the game, Kelsey Winger was interviewing Chaz Surratt, and he said during the timeout, Coach Bateman, the defensive coordinator, said, watch the pop pass, watch the pop pass. Sure enough, we asked him about it in our meetings yesterday, and Bateman told us, he said, you know what, they tried that on me when I was at Army in 2016. I just knew it was coming. How about that? Pays off. They got the victory bell back here in town. There's Jay Bateman. Jay Bateman, 2014-18 defensive coordinator at Army, also at Ball State and Elon. Just over 11 minutes to go in our third quarter, the second all-time meeting between Mercer and North Carolina. They have not met since 1925. Sack for the Tar Heels in the first of the game. Mohasek has the sack of the sophomore. Loss of six on the play for the Mercer Bears. Yeah, Mercer's done a good job of getting the ball out in a hurry. Nowhere to go except for down for Riley and Mohasek, the sophomore out of McHenry, Illinois. Getting in on the fun here. First sack of the season for Raymond Mohasek, the sophomore. Devas and tackled by Duck, no gain. Across the way, it's Bobby Lamb and James, you mentioned the Lamb family in Georgia. And the football tradition amongst that family. Dads, brothers, and nephews, all in the coaching ranks. High school legendary coach, Bobby Lamb's yep. dad. His son Taylor as well, who was a four-year starter at App State. We're down to 17 now for Mercer. Father Ray, the legendary high school football coach, Commerce High School. A couple of state championships, 22 years there. There you go, there's Ray Lamb. After those 250-plus wins, he was 18 years the director of recruiting at Georgia. There's brother Al, who had just under 200 wins as a high school coach. Taylor, who's now a GA at South Carolina, and Trey Lamb. Most photogenic, I think, of all of them. <laughs> That's a good pick, isn't it? All coaches need a picture like that. But they need it in black and white. That one needs to be in black and white. That's a Lamley tree. Groves, the fair catch for North Carolina. BC will have a chance against Pittsburgh on the last week of the season, that game in Pittsburgh. Panthers at Virginia Tech today. Last check, they were trailing the Hokies. I think two on that list that we just saw, James, two things stand out to me. First, Louisville, certainly, under Scott Satterfield. Without a doubt. After last year not winning a conference game, and now they're bowl eligible. And then Florida State's return to the bowl eligibility ranks after missing out last year and all the turmoil that that team has had to go through. We saw them last week against Alabama State and Odell Hagens. He's undefeated as an interim coach, but Florida State is bowl eligible again this year. Knowles have the weekend off, getting ready for the big rivalry with Florida next week. And we saw them take on Alabama State last week. And, and you mentioned Louisville. You're right. Scott Satterfield, it's just, it's amazing, really, the, the turnaround that they've done. Explosive offense. The ACC's best 33 plays, over 30 yards. And, and I, and believe me, I'm not pumping it up too much because I saw a lot of Louisville last year. And it was, at many times, unfortunately, an uninterested football team. And I just, I, I just thought it was going to be a long time before they turned it back around. But they did a fantastic job of getting their minds right and playing some good football. And maybe one other mention is Wake Forest. Yeah. For the fourth straight year and the first time in program history, they are bowl eligible. And we will see them, James, next week as they go to the Carrier Dome to close out 
the regular season. Syracuse is at Louisville today, and then they'll host Wake, and that's our game next week. We'll have that for you. Coverage starts at 12.30 from beautiful Syracuse, New York. No matter what time of year, it's always beautiful in Syracuse. Cannon on the return. I guess that depends on who you ask, but no, I would that, agree with inside that. the dome, I guarantee it's going to be about 72 degrees. <laughs> yeah. I can guarantee you that. And we won't have any weather issues there. And always a 2% chance of rain. You just never know. You don't want to make it zero. No, they're making significant upgrades to yep. the roof and the whole building, so we'll, we'll certainly explore that next week as we continue with our final week of ACC College Football on the Regional Sports Networks and Fox Sports South. So glad that you've been with us today for North Carolina. An impressive performance. Certainly along the lines of what we expected against the Mercer Bears out of the football championship subdivision. And if you're just joining us, Sam Howell, the freshman for North Carolina, three TD passes in the first half. There was an injured player for Mercer, and that's Devison. Yeah, They're all conference that. running back, yeah. Yeah, he's run so hard, and I mean, he's just taken so many shots here throughout the day. Hmm, that's a shame. His back up here on the depth chart is Kareem Rogers. Another Georgia kid, a redshirt freshman, but Tyree Devison. He... Hope it's not something he has to deal with. Yeah. Once again, this is a, this is a growing program because they were reinstated 2013 after the long hiatus. They were able to join the Southern Conference for 2014 out of Macon, Georgia. And, you know, Bobby Lamb told us it's a source of pride in that part of the state. And the fans turn out to come support the Bears. They play in five-star stadium, over 10,000 capacity. And five-star stadium opened up in 2013. They've got field turf there as well. Three and five in the SoCon this year. They've had some successful seasons in Southern Conference play as well. We told you, though, they had an injury to their starting quarterback, and that certainly impacted their year. And we'll update Devison when we come back. And that's the second sack of the game for North Carolina. Well, it's an offensive line that just needs to hang in there. They've, they've had some injuries that they've had to deal with, as I mentioned earlier. And they've done, done a really good job. The game plan is just get rid of that ball to stay away from those big guys up front, the hard rushers. They've got... Got some good recruits coming into it, that offensive line. Kevin Booker, a good kid out of Buholtz High School in Gainesville, Florida. Part of the future on that offensive line. Third and long for Mercer. Riley on the run, deflected. Hit a few sets of hands, but falls incomplete. Durden had a chance at it for Mercer. Well, put him on the run. Buy him a little bit of time. Riley doing a good job. Looked like maybe he was, he was trying to get it to Durden to begin with. Don Chapman. Groves is back for the punt from Gopal. Groves at his 45-yard line. Warming those hands to the last second. Going to bounce past midfield. It's a Bears roll inside the 35. That's a 49-yard punt for Gopal. So North Carolina will take over. You know, James, the one thing I noticed when we arrived on campus yesterday, there was not a very large residual effect from the loss against Pittsburgh. And that was a tough one, right? Yeah. Yeah. November 14th at Pittsburgh, 34-27 in overtime. Tar Heels had a chance to tie it in OT and couldn't get their touchdown. So they lost to Pittsburgh, and that's a team they had beaten six straight times. All ACC conference games but you didn't you didn't feel that that was going to affect this team especially today and moving forward to next week at NC State because the goal is still right ahead of you win the last two games 
and take that first significant step, right. get to a bowl game in the first year and second stint under head coach Mack Brown. Yeah, and, and it says a lot about Mack Brown, a lot about his coaching staff and, and the leaders on this football team and leaders that we've, we've had this Carolina team a handful of times now and, and a few times here. So on Fridays, we get to sit down with some of those guys. And there's a big hitter, guy we sat down with yesterday. Henderson. Josh Henderson, the freshman on the run. And even in that game against Pittsburgh, it was a comeback. And they trailed 24-10 and then came back to tie the game at 27 in regulation, but lost an OT. Well, making it interesting, that's for sure. Look at these guys, offensive line, up blocking on that next level. And Henderson getting his chance. But we saw some nice runs. Antonio Williams. Michael Carter, especially with his three touchdown runs earlier in this football game. And Williams also with a TD run to open the scoring in the first quarter of 11 yards in the first for the senior Antonio Williams. Carter's last TD run in the third quarter was for 60 yards, a career long. But you know, you know, Tom, speaking of those meetings, we've sat down with Charlie Head, Javante Williams, uh, Jazz Surratt, Strobridge yesterday, Daz, Daz Newsom. I mean, these guys have, they, they've, it's, it's really been enjoyable. It, it really has been interesting to, to get to know them. It's one of my favorite parts of this job, going in there on Fridays and, and just having conversations with the coaches and especially with the players. I really enjoyed the, the look in the eyes of a lot of these kids, too, and you're exactly right. There wasn't a lot of that hangover, feeling sorry for themselves after a tough pit loss. You know, unfortunately, they've had to deal with a, a few too many of those close losses, but you get the sense that this is, this is going to be more okay, this program here in the immediate future, because you get that offseason behind you, and this is, I don't know how this isn't one of the favorites on this side of the ACC, when you look at Hal and all the young talent he has around him, and all of those guys getting healthy and coming back defensively, that they've had to just get creative and put bodies out there just to have someone out there playing throughout the year really grown up through the whole process. They were Coastal champs back in 2015 and lost in the title game to Clemson, 45-37. That pass is complete, nine yards. And Mari Morales makes the catch. First down into the red zone for North Carolina. And Phil Longo tells us that this quarterback and Vincent Amendola, the freshman, can spin it. And there's an example right there. Nicely thrown football and on into, into the CPI security red zone. And that the first completion of the season for Amendola. Going to try to run it with Brooks. So a lot of different players getting some playing time in this game now. James, you mentioned the tough losses for North Carolina. I got something to throw at you. You ready for this? Yes. So they've lost six games this season, right? Those six games have been decided by a total of 26 points. That is an average in the losses by 4.3 points per game. You can't get any closer than that. In fact, we told you that the nine games decided by seven points or fewer, the most in the nation and the most since 1936 by a team in the football bowl subdivision. Incredible. And yet here they are, one victory away from bowl eligibility, and they are going back to the end zone with British Brooks. 12 yards for Brooks in the TD. Look at his teammate. And the vet was senior Antonio Williams is fired up for the freshman Brooks. A oh, sophomore, rather, I beg your pardon. Brooks getting his first carries of the season on this drive and his first career TD. Michael Rubino, the senior from Apex, North Carolina, the extra point. 
Carter said, I got three today. You got two more to catch me. <laughs> well, that's a nice looking scoop to get outside, though. And again, Simmons. Simmons, who had the touchdown catch earlier on the post route, the nice throw from Hal. He's been really impressive as a blocker down the field. On a few of these touchdown runs, he's had those defensive backs locked up in the end zone. That energy. Look at that smile from Antonio Williams. That's, you you kind of understand in a hurry what Mac Brown was talking about. How much he likes this guy right here. Our five-star drive summary is brought to you by Yellowwood. James Bates. Doesn't have the yellow tag from Yellowwood. Believe me, you don't want it. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> You know, I laugh at that every week when you do that impression. <laughs> I do it I for listen you. To, I could listen to you talk like that <laughs> the entire game. Yeah, but those are kind of like fighting words around here. You know, because the head ball coach, he was, he was a true. dookie. Yeah. He was a blue devil. But they're on top of that rivalry right now, so they, they're not worried about that. That's right. Victory bell. You can hear him ringing it down in the corner of the field there with that fresh Tar Heel blue paint job. <laughs> ringing the victory bell. Kelsey? Oh, look at the guy doing push-ups, too, Kelsey. Yeah. We've been hearing that victory bell all day because for every touchdown score, they have to do that many push-ups on top of that, and the victory bell rings every single time. So, for instance, they have 56 points right now. That guy just did 56 push-ups, and they rang the bell 56 times. I don't I don't know if you guys could. Could y'all knock out 56? Shoot, I don't know how they're base. choosing. Who, who has to get up there and do yeah. it at this point? Oh, man. I'm a, <laughs> shoot, come on, Bates. But if the they're doing is, it, you got to do it. I vote James Bates. Kelsey, come on. Hopefully they get to rotate. You know, hopefully it's no, not the it's same, the same guy. What? They're rotating people for every touchdown. But, they I mean, the guy, I watched him. I stood over there when it was 49 at the student section, oh. counted it out. But I'll make y'all a deal. I'll do the first two. You guys split the rest. All right. 56. I'm in. Then, then you can go on the field before the game without your shirt on, like some of the players getting loose in these 40-degree temps. You were watching them prior to the game. Those guys doing push-ups. Wish they could take their shirts off and show those, <laughs> those, those, those chest muscles after doing 56, 49. Yeah. Man. And ringing the victory bell, too, which, by the way, I rang it when I came into the stadium. We saw the victory bell. They have it in a storage area underneath the stadium. And I, I'd never really been that close to it, so I wanted to ring it. And I asked the guys, is it okay if I ring the bell? And they said, sure. And I'm telling you, you got to get that thing moving. you got to get some momentum to ring the big bell. It's heavy. But it's the prize between Duke and North Carolina. And they've been playing for it since 1948. But then they say you can't go too fast. You get, you get, you get a, there's an art to it. In fact, Mac Brown's last victory in his first stint as the head coach of North Carolina back in November of 1997 was a win against Duke for the victory bell, 50 to 14. It means a lot around here, believe me. And it's an honor to call that game. And I've had the chance to do it the last few years in this part of the country. Only eight miles separating the campuses between Duke and North Carolina. And that was an incredible game to call. Maybe a surprising ending. Hard to predict that ending, but an incredible game between the two teams. And ultimately won by North Carolina. So the final seconds ticking off the clock in the third quarter. It's all Tar Heels. And goal number one has been achieved for Mac Brown. They had to win the last two games. They got this one out of the way against Mercer. In large part, thanks to their freshman quarterback, Sam Howell. And the guys will tell you where we're headed. It's time for the fourth. It's the start of the fourth quarter. Is it London? Is it Chapel Hill? Well, we did have British Brooks just score the last yeah. TD for North Carolina. Parliament. As we approach the 6 o'clock hour, Saturday evening here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So glad that you have been with us. For the Mercer Bears and the North Carolina Tar Heels. First met back in 1925. Tar Heels went on the road and beat the Bears in Macon, Georgia. 3-0. Trying to make it back-to-back -back shutouts. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't scored on them since 1925. That's a long run. That has got to be some kind of record. <laughs> Freddie Kiger will look that up for us. Skip McMillan, our spotter. 
Eric Kendall, our producer, Lonnie Dale, director, Michael Thompson, technical director, along with our outstanding production crew. Into the secondary and incomplete for the Bears. There's a look at Tyree Devison Kelsey. We saw him leave the field a couple of minutes ago. How's he doing? Yeah, I did get word from their training staff that it is an ankle sprain and he will not return to this game. But, you know, coming into this game, they were really watching for a milestone for him because he was 51 yards away from 1,000. That would make him only the second player in this program history since being reinstated to reach 1,000 yards. And on that last run, you guys, he, he reached 53. So he just reached 1,000 yards, but he is out for the remainder of the game. Kelsey, thank you. 20 carries, 53 yards for Tyree Devison, the junior from Woodstock, Georgia. Congratulations to Tyree. Hard-earned yards tonight, guys. That been running hard. He'd be back in it. Glad to hear that it's, I hate to say, just an ankle, but it's, you know, you, you, they're dealing with those legs. And it's, an ankle is something that'll take a little while to get over. But he'll be back and healthy anyway, ready to go for spring ball and then on into the summer. With Bobby Lamb and company have to get ready for two, uh, 2020. Bobby Lamb played quarterback at Furman, the 85 SoCon player of the year. Watching his quarterback, Kalen Riley, on the run. Made it to the national championship game in 1985 and lost to Georgia Southern with Bobby Lamb at quarterback. Tamari Fox, he wanted that one. He, he was coming from all the way across the field to get a piece of Riley there, forcing the fourth down. He mentioned it there off the top of the fourth quarter. But in these games, here he comes. Watch, watch 56 coming. Just a freshman. Right inside there on that defensive line. He's really going to be big here in the future as they lose a couple guys inside. Strobridge outside here late in the season, but he's been forced to play inside with some injuries. Tamon and Tamari, the Fox brothers, part of the team for North Carolina from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Timeout on the field. That Yellow Jackets, they played with some fire. Like a machine against hey, NC oh, State. Oh, I like it. The machine, the motivation perhaps. <laughs> but, well, that was, that was that was good to see. The uh, team going out there with, you know, I mean, not a whole lot to play for, it doesn't seem. But they, the leaders and those coaches got them ready to play. A nice win. A nice try to come back for Dave Durden's squad. So they'll go for it on fourth down for Mercer. Fourth and six. Whistles before they can snap the ball. Flag is out. Ball start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. John Thomas, 6'2, 333 pounds, and a redshirt freshman. That's not the way he wanted to get his name into this broadcast. And because of the penalty, the Bears are going to have to punt. So the Bears are going to finish their season, James, at 4-8. and eight. After losing last week at East Tennessee State, 38-33. Groves is the deep man. North Carolina coming off of its loss in overtime at Pittsburgh on November 14th. The last game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. All time six and 28 against the ACC for this Mercer program. Some of their wins are against Clemson. Now, keep in mind, those wins came in 1910, 1911, and 1933 against the Tigers. Oh. It was an awkward looking punt. His mouthpiece fell out when he hit it. That's never a good sign. No. So they're going to put it at the 29-yard line. Punt of 25 yards. And Mandola and the Tar Heel offense huddled around 
their first year. Offensive coordinator Phil Longo. Enjoyed our conversation with Coach Longo yesterday as well. Talking about the maturing process this season of Sam Howell, who does the extra things, the little things that you need to do to be successful in this conference and here in Chapel Hill. Did all the little things and did them in a big way in the first half. TD passes of 66, 4, and 33 yards to set the new school record for TD passes in a season for the freshman Sam Howell. Yeah, so his, his quarterback is passionate about studying. And, and when you've got that in the quarterback, you, you feel all right, especially when you've got the talents that number seven has. I feel smarter after talking with Phil Longo. Yeah. Very interesting approach to things and in conjunction with his head coach, Mac Brown. I also always think about maybe going to a barber shop after our conversation. He's with sticking with the high and tight. It's yeah. been successful. Henderson on the run for North Carolina of 21 yards. He's got that. Remember Beavis and Butthead's gym teacher? <laughs> That's what that cut is. I can't say that I do. You do. You just don't want to. I, do I swear. I, I, I would back you up on that. You know I would. Well, success today offensively. I think it was expected, James. Not a stretch there, certainly. They, they were more talented up and down the roster than Mercer. But still needed to win. Still needed to have that approach to get the win this week and then it's NC State next week yeah. regardless of the record yep. for NC State they got to go to Raleigh Carter Friendly Stadium and finish off the season and finish strong if they want to get to a bowl sometimes that can even be more fun you get on that bus with with your buddies and you've worked so hard and you kind of go into enemy territory it's kind of that feel of, of you against the world because they're going to get a good shot from, from North Carolina State. And it has banged up Carolina fans as your team has been. It's been even worse over there. I'd say it's one of those you wouldn't wish upon your your biggest enemy, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure that that's not the case when you look at some of these rivals. So we'll get on that bus with a, with a whole lot on the line. And for NC State, it will be their bowl game. That's the, That's all. They, they won't go bowling. You mentioned it earlier. They're, they still sat before that Georgia Tech game, sat at four wins. Had they won the Georgia Tech game, they would have had five, and it would have been a battle to see who goes bowling. Instead, they'll have a chance to knock Mac Brown's team out of a bowl, which would feel pretty sweet, I'm sure, for Wolfpack players and fans as well. So the Heels haven't gone to a bowl since the 2016 Sun Bowl, which they lost to Stanford. Their last bowl win was 2013, the Belk Bowl. Charlotte, North Carolina, beating Cincinnati 39-17. You hear it a lot when, when the bowl talk starts coming up with teams that are kind of right on the bubble this time of year. But it's it's so true. Those extra practices as we take a look at the North Carolina schedule and Mac Brown's first game back. How about that big win over the South Carolina Gamecocks? Come from behind with that true freshman quarterback, then backed it up with a Miami team that a lot of people still thought, you know, would, would might even be one of the better teams in the ACC. They've rebounded and played some better ball. And not, a, not a great outing against Wake Forest. They didn't have Strobe Ridge. Got a, a team fighting back late, but an ugly first half there. But to get Tom an, to go to a bowl game, and when you've got a team, and, and we've talked about it throughout the broadcast, how young this team is, not just Sam Howell, but a lot of these players and, and a lot of inexperience and a lot of these injuries, too, to get to that bowl game and to have all of those extra practices for Phil Longo and that coaching staff is huge, huge, so important. And, you know, and, and obviously for recruiting. You, you want those recruits to see you there in postseason play. And, uh, already a good start to recruiting under Coach Mac Brown. Hey, James, what about the effort against number one Clemson right here on this field in late September? 21-20, they went for two and didn't get it late in that ball game and lost. 21-20. The 21 points, the fewest scored by Clemson since the college football playoff championship game in 2017 against Alabama, 24-6. I mean, that effort by the Tar Heels. Play, personal foul, offense number 88. 
15-yard penalty, it'll be fourth down. Could have sent shockwaves yeah. through the national landscape in college football. Absolutely. It's And, you know, and, and since then, Clemson has, has really kind of grown up and, and it, it kind of helped to boost them to, to who they are and where they want to be as they try to go high-flying into the postseason. And they're trying to plead his case as he's coming off the field, his Morales. And, you know, it's interesting, talking to Kelsey, Mac Brown going into that halftime locker room, he, he was quick, even with the big lead at halftime, quick to bring up those three big penalties. And, and it, you know, it's, it's something to go back in there. You, you get in these tight games, tight games, as we talked about, that they've all been so tight. Those penalties are, are what cost you. you. You can't have those just in big situations like that. One that took away the interception, one that took away the touchdown pass, and then right. for the seniors and for the Tar Heels in the last home game of the season. And looking for their fifth win of the season. They've got it well in hand. One more bowl eligibility, and that's next week on the road in Raleigh against NC State. By the way, that game against NC State is the 109th all-time meeting with the Wolfpack. After losing in overtime last year, 34-28 on this field, and NC State has won three in a row and four of the last five against North Carolina. Reggie Gillespie ran for five touchdowns in that game for NC State a season ago, including the game winner in overtime. North Carolina's converted quarterback to linebacker Chaz Surratt. Such an important piece of the defensive unit. He's part of our Let's Go Places, brought to you by Toyota. Yeah, going sideline to sideline. Only place he needs to go, making big play after big play. He had the fumble recovery to start things off. Early in the game, pass play from Mercer. We've got him at five tackles unofficially up here, and that takes him to 100 on the season. So leading the team coming in with 95 up to 100 now. And his buddies still in there charging hard with him on the sidelines. That was Trey Shaw, the sophomore defensive back from Elmwood, Georgia, chopping him down. Harrison Frost, the sophomore from Kennesaw, Georgia, is in at quarterback for the Mercer offense. We did see Frost attempt to pass earlier in the game. It was intercepted by Storm Duck on a fourth down fake field goal. There's a flag on the play, 23 yards on the play. It could be the longest play of the game for Mercer. Let's see. Well, it was a probably going to be offensive pass interference and still a nice throw and catch there on that back shoulder ball to Durden. There's no foul for face mask. First down. So we talked a lot with Jay Bateman about this, this look right here. And that's Obi Akuna just trying to hang on as he was going to run by him, feeling that, that back shoulder throw coming, but had all of his momentum going the other way. You know, and, and those are the kind of things. He's, he's a freshman defensive back, and that's kind of a conversation we had with Jay Bateman yesterday. Is as you get older and you get those reps, you start to get a feel for how they're running those routes, if they're trying to run by you or if they're going to break it off. But it's just that I can't imagine how tough that must be as a defensive back to try to cover a guy who knows exactly where he's going, going full speed, probably the, the best athletes on the field, and then they stop, and you got to cover that back shoulder throw. A little bit of sloppiness here in the backfield. Oh, Tar Heels smelling blood. Marshall had to scoop it up after the snap. A little bit low to Harrison Frost. Green for the money. Gold for the hunt. Told you about that critical game in Blacksburg this afternoon as that pass over the middle by Frost is caught. McKee went up to get that one. Good looking play for the Bears. That was a nice throw. A little bit of time takes a 
thinks a pop, but it's got to feel pretty good. Trying to go put some points on the board. This this is the this gets interesting now. Put the TV back on. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, look at them on the sidelines. They're all on their feet cheering them on. They don't want to let them score any points here. 26 yards on the previous play inside the 20, and somehow the catch is made by Durden. Back-to-back -back completions for Harrison Frost as Durden beat Biggers. How about this throw by Frost? Again, he takes another hit as he's throwing it. And not much room over there, but Durden looking it in. And how about this? Had a chance at a field goal earlier, but faked it. Before that play, those pass plays went for 26 and 28 yards from Frost. There's Marshall on the run. Just to let you know that Virginia Tech has the lead with about 10 minutes to go in the fourth over Pittsburgh, 27 to nothing. So that sets up that game between Virginia Tech and Virginia. Next Friday, the Commonwealth clash. And that's going to be for the coastal title. And Brandon Marshall in there running hard now. The freshman from Jacksonville Reigns down in Florida. And Jay Bateman. It's, it's hard to shut anybody out. FBS, FCS. It's not easy to do. And he continue to coach as you've got. You've got Marshall down on the ground, unfortunately. That's the second bear running back to deal with an injury here today. Kareem Rogers has come in at running back for Marshall. 56-0 North Carolina, but the Bears second and goal. Tar Heels last shutout came in September of 2012. There it goes. Trying to preserve it. It's going to be Rogers taking it into the end zone. And the Bears are on the board. Two yards out and in for the score. Frost with some pretty balls thrown there on that drive. Some nice catches. Second TD run, James, for Rodgers this season. And that is the 18th rushing touchdown of the year for this Mercer team. Oh, look, at, look at Jay Bateman. Look at him. He, he's upset. I'm telling you, I, I'm not kidding when I say this. Defensive coordinator, defensive players. That's, that's, that goose egg is it's hard to come by and it's so important. And those backups, uh oh. No bit of work this week in practice. Good job though by the Bears. Nice looking drive. Kareem Rogers capping it off. First points of the play was ruled a pass play. So Frost on that drive, who came in in place of Kalen Riley, went four or five and 79 yards for the first points of the game for Bobby Lamb and the Mercer Bears. And it's the second touchdown pass for Frost on the season. Well, they weren't going to let what happened in 1925 happen again. What happened in 1925, well, they James? Were, they were shut out in the only other meeting between <laughs> these two schools. And where was that? Were you not listening to yourself earlier? I, I want to see if you were listening. It, it was up there in Macon, yes, the was. heart of Georgia, and Carolina won 3 to nothing. 3.38 on the clock in the fourth. Mercer, members of the Southern Conference since 2014. North Carolina, a former member of the Southern Conference. Chestnut on the return. So the Tar Heels are going to improve to 5-6 and six on the season. 3-3 three and three at home. Three touchdown passes to set a new record of 32 TD passes in a season. For Sam Howell, Carter, the three TDs, Deami Brown, 83 yards on three receptions for Deami Brown. The TD pass went for 66 yards from Howell to Brown in the first quarter. He's a sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a couple of Charlotte area players in Brown and Sam Howell from Indian Trail, North Carolina, and Sun Valley High School. against the Tar Heels. Yeah. 
So for Coach Mac Brown, this is going to be win number 74 as the head coach of North Carolina. We wanted the timeout, I guess. Yeah, that's what the indi he's indicating. Time is what he's indicating there. Time out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Brooks had to fall on that one. Brooks has a TD run. Loss of six on the play. Coach Brown passed Dick Crum with his 73rd win to set the school record on October 26th. That was the victory bell game against Duke. Twenty to seventeen was the final in that one. This one not nearly as close. And it's ironic that we mentioned that nine games decided by seven points or fewer, most in the nation. That is not the case today at Keenan Memorial Stadium, home of Tar Heel football since 1927. That number will go to 74 for Matt Brown. Was the head coach of North Carolina the first time around from 1988 to 1997 and the coach of the year in the conference in 96. He won 23 of his last 26 games. And that included that last game of the season against Duke 50 to 14 back in 1997. Did not coach in the bowl game. That was the Gator Bowl against Virginia Tech. You know, Tom, there in the foreground of that last shot was Lonnie Galloway's wide receiver coach. He was the offensive coordinator at Louisville for a while. And it, it's, it's been a nice turnaround. Remember, remember, there he is right there in the middle waving his arm. It, remember, there was, a, there was a stretch where these receivers, they were dropping some balls. And it was, it, it was a problem. And, and they, uh, they did some new drills, got them kind of refocused in. And, and that hasn't been the case here as of late. You haven't seen as many drops. You've seen a couple really nice catches here in this game. He's got him playing hard. He's got a lot of good young talent. Get Daz Newsom waking up at the right time. Get him back out there next week. This is him trying to make a charge the end of this season. Cannon was back there for the Bears. Just falls on top of that ball. So next week it's NC State. A win, bowl eligibility for the Tar Heel program. Mac Brown went five and five in his first go round as the head coach for the Tar Heels against NC State. One twenty on the clock. So glad that you've been with us this afternoon. This one was not really in doubt from the very beginning. Tar Heels scored on their very first drive after a turnover by the Bears. And they kept up the intensity throughout the first half. <laughs> 42 to nothing at halftime. 56 to seven. The only other more lopsided game in the ACC this season was Miami against Bethune Cookman. As the Hurricanes won that one 63 to nothing. Second and six for Frost, incomplete. But Frost throws a nice ball. That one, one that definitely should have been caught. Just a sophomore, we told you earlier, we foresaw most of the game, Kalen Riley. The junior quarterback will on the show, Robert Riddle, injured against VMI. He's out for the season, but got some capable guys there. They're so con one next year, the quarterback. By the way, we're going to Syracuse next week, James. They are trailing at Louisville, 42-26, and that is late in the third. Cuse needed to win its final two games to be bowl eligible. We'll have them against Wake Forest at the Dome next week for you with 41 seconds. And the coverage starts at 12.30. Tom Warner, James Bates, Kelsey Winger, and our outstanding ACC College Football Production crew with you from the Carrier Dome, Syracuse, New York. Wake Forest and Syracuse, the ninth all-time meeting between the teams. Wake has won two of the last three. Syracuse leads in ACC matchups. 
four to two against Work, with four wins against two losses against the Demon Deeks. So that sets you up for next week. Demon Deeks are already bowl eligible, and North Carolina James needs one more win, and they got to go to NC State next week to cement their chance to play in the postseason. That should be interesting. NC State and North Carolina, not too far apart these two schools and not too much love shared between the two nice win today for the Tar Heels the Mercer Bears came in and fought hard the 56-7 Mac Brown's team now five wins on the season they had five wins combined in the previous two seasons 